New figures reveal the true extent of slavery in modern Britain. Hidden from sight, 13,000 victims are trapped in farms, factories or trafficked into the sex trade. Also tonight, one year on, the victims of the Clutha helicopter disaster are remembered. A double victory for the North over the Southern Hemisphere as England and Wales both win. And... We love him and always will. Rest in peace, Brussy. In memory of Philip Hughes, a captain and a friend's tribute. This is ITV News with Kylie Pentelow. Good evening. Slavery was abolished in Britain more than 200 years ago. But today, officially for the first time, it was revealed that there are up to 13,000 people, men, women and children, living as slaves here in the UK. Most are hidden from view, trapped in poverty and facing deportation if they go on the run, forced to work for little or nothing in farms, factories or trafficked into the sex trade. Our political correspondent Libby Vina reports. It's hard to imagine that people are kept as slaves in modern Britain. But the Home Office, which produced this advert, warning about the problem, now says it's much more common than they suspected. Domestic workers, young women exploited for sex, and farmhands among the many victims. Slavery is closer than you think. New research suggests there are between 10 and 13,000 people being kept as slaves. That's more than four times the National Crime Agency estimate of around 2,700. One woman spoke to ITV News about her abuse at the hands of a gang. I did try and run away and eventually they'd find you. So they'd drive past the house and wait for you. They'd threaten to harm you, my sisters and my family. Um, they'd stop my sisters and my family on occasions and then they, they like watching you. Today the Foreign Secretary said new legislation should help. Uh, this is a difficult uh, problem to identify and uh, these are difficult numbers to count but it's clear that there are very significant numbers of people in this country who are being kept in conditions that can only be described as slavery. They're not free uh, to change job, to leave, to move uh, as they might wish to do and we are determined to tackle uh, that challenge. But anti-slavery campaigners say visa regulations also need reviewing as some victims are too afraid to escape their captors. Irrespective of how abusive the employment relationship they find themselves in, whether it includes physical violence or sexual violence or poor working conditions or no or low pay, um, if they leave that uh, employment relationship they will be deported. So that's putting into the hands of unscrupulous employers enormous power. He fears the modern slavery bill will do little to curb that power. The fact that so far just 155 people have been prosecuted for crimes connected to slavery does suggest that the police need new powers and new laws to tackle the problem. Theresa May, the Home Secretary, has said that it is a priority. The real question is whether her modern slavery bill will be enough to resolve this very horrific issue. OK, Libby Vina, thank you. One of Britain's most senior policemen has spoken out after his officers were forced to keep a teenage girl with mental health issues in custody because he says there are no proper facilities to take her. Well, let's get more from Duncan Golestani now. Duncan, it's highly unusual for a senior of officer to speak out like this, isn't it? What more can you tell us? Yeah, this was an incredibly passionate and public outburst by the Assistant Chief Constable of Devon and Cornwall Police, Paul Netherton. He says his officers arrested a 16-year-old girl on Thursday. The next day she was sectioned under the Mental Health Act, but there was nowhere suitable uh, to send her and she is still in police custody. You can see how exasperated he is from a series of tweets he sent. We'll have a look at just one of them where he says... Custody on a Friday and Saturday night is no place for a child suffering mental health issues. Nurses being sourced to look after her in custody. He is clearly very interested in her welfare, but this is politically sensitive for the government. 
NHS England are pushing back quite forcefully on the idea that there are no beds available across the UK. They say actually it's a question of an appropriate and suitable bed. And in the last few minutes, they've got in touch to say that one has now been found locally. So that spares this vulnerable 16-year-old girl a third night in police custody. OK, Duncan Golestani, thank you. The Foreign Secretary has warned that Britain could face real economic damage if the UK decides to leave the European Union. Philip Hammond also denied the Cabinet was at odds over the decision to stay or leave the EU and said the government's focus was now on getting the best deal possible for the country. A manhunt is underway after a patient attacked two members of staff at a psychiatric hospital in South London before escaping and stealing a nearby car. Paul Williams is described as dangerous and people are advised not to approach him. And the A1 motorway near Catterick in North Yorkshire was closed for most of the day, causing traffic chaos after an explosion was heard near the Marne barracks early this morning. Family, friends and politicians gathered today to remember the 10 people who lost their lives in the Clutha Bar helicopter disaster in Glasgow. A year on from the tragedy, there are calls for all helicopters to carry compulsory black boxes as the cause of the crash still remains a mystery. Sasha Williams reports. They can never forget what happened last year, but today was a chance for friends and family of those killed in the Clutha helicopter crash to remember those they'd lost. Alongside them in Glasgow Cathedral, members of the emergency services who were there that night and Scotland's new First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. Ten lives were lost when a police helicopter crashed through the roof of a packed Clutha Vaults pub last November. Many more were injured. All three people on board the Eurocopter died, as did seven who'd been inside the bar. At today's service, a candle was lit for every one of them. Anniversaries show that this is something that is now part of our history, it's part of our life, it's part of our, our identity uh, as the family of Glasgow and marking that I think will be very important for the relatives so that they don't feel just totally alone. Also important for the relatives though is to know why this tragedy happened. Air accident investigators have confirmed the helicopter suffered a double engine failure but as yet, the reasons for that failure remain a mystery. And since there was no black box on board, not currently a legal requirement for aircraft that small, what went on in the moments before the crash may never be known. The final report into the disaster will be published next year. Families here are praying it'll bring them the answers they so desperately seek. Sasha Williams, ITV News. On to rugby and it was a good day for the Northern Hemisphere with victories for both England and Wales. England beat Australia 26-17 at Twickenham, while Lee Halfpenny kicked Wales to a 12-6 win over South Africa. Isla Glaister has the action. After defeats to New Zealand and South Africa, England had one last chance to beat the Southern Hemisphere's best. After an early exchange of penalties, Ben Morgan barreled over the try line to give England some breathing space. It didn't take long for Australia to dent England's lead. Bernard Foley breaking through to make the score 13-10. But England's pack were on the prowl again, setting up Morgan for try number two. Australia hit back once more, Will Skelton powering over. Now the deficit was just three. But George Ford calmed England's nerves with a final penalty, giving them a 26-17 victory. In Cardiff, it was a tighter affair, as Wales also toppled their Southern Hemisphere opposition. There were no tries here, though. It was left to Lee Halfpenny to kick Wales to a 12-6 win over South Africa, a confidence boost for both home nations ahead of next year's World Cup. Isla Glaister, ITV News. 
Football now and Arsenal secured their first Premier League win of the uh, win since the start of the month, beating West Brom 1-0. Danny Welbeck got the goal, heading in Santi Cazorla's cross after half time. The much needed three points lifts Arsenal to sixth in the table. In today's other games, Manchester United moved up to fourth with a 3-0 win over Hull. Liverpool, QPR and West Ham also won. The games at Burnley and Swansea ended in draws and it's still 0-0 in tonight's game. And finally, there have been more affectionate displays around the world in memory of the cricketer Philip Hughes. Australia has postponed next week's test match and at many of today's sporting events, including the rugby at Twickenham, they remembered him. And in a tearful tribute to his close friend, Captain Michael Clark said his number 64 shirt will be retired in his honour. Rags Martel has more. In Sydney they left their bats out. The death of Philip Hughes has left an entire country in grief. <sighs> Leading the tributes, one of his best friends in the game. We're going to miss that cheeky grin and that twinkle in his eye. The Australian captain had kept a 48-hour vigil by his teammate's bed in hospital. His statement, sometimes hard to watch. Our dressing room will never be the same. We loved him and always will. Rest in peace, Brussy. Hughes was hit by a ball just below his helmet on Tuesday. He never regained consciousness. A marvellous achievement by Philip Hughes. His one day international shirt number will now be retired. His death has been felt throughout the game. England and Sri Lanka holding a two-minute silence in Colombo. And half the world away in a different sport. A moment of applause by England and Australia's rugby players at Twickenham. And on the internet, a touching tribute by cricket fans everywhere. Solitary bats posted on social networks. Things were always put into perspective when Husey said, where else would you rather be, boys, but playing cricket for your country? But Australia is in no mood to play the game. Their next test postponed till next Thursday, the day after Hughes's funeral. Rags Martel, ITV News. Memories of Philip Hughes. And that's it. I'll be back with the late news at five to midnight. Until then, whatever you're up to, have a very good evening. Bye-bye for now. A warm outlook. Worcester Bosch sponsors ITV National Weather. Hello again. Well, it was a fairly decent day for many of us across the UK during this afternoon. But looking ahead to tonight, there will be outbreaks of rain in places, but then brighter skies developing from the west throughout Sunday. So in a bit more detail, then, we have got some cloud and rain sinking its way southwards throughout tonight. Generally patchy rain on either side of that, so to the far north and the far south of the country. It will be largely dry with clear skies, but it's going to get chilly, so a touch of frost in places. And we'll also see some mist and fog too, taking many of us into a murky start to the day tomorrow. Now, this time that rain band will be lying across southern areas elsewhere that will slowly start to brighten up and not looking too bad for the afternoon it's staying cloudy and damp along the east coast elsewhere drier and brighter a top temperature of 12 degrees a warm outlook worcester bosch sponsors itv national weather